Hello. And welcome once again to our channel. In this video, we are going to give you 5 reasons why you should visit Guinea-Bissau as soon as possible. Many people confuse Guinea-Bissau, that small country on the west coast of Africa, with others like Guinea-Conakry, Equatorial Guinea, or New Guinea. Guinea-Bissau, which is listed 7th among the 15 least visited countries on earth, is one of the most amazing countries I have ever visited. This is a place where you can still experience the true and unspoiled Africa, far from large hotels and tourist resorts and among the local population. Guinea-Bissau is a small developing country on the West Africa coast, between Senegal and Guinea-Conakry, and was until 1973 a Portuguese colony. So, why should you visit Guinea-Bissau? Reason 1. Just because. The country is great. Even if you just stick to the city, it's impossible not to be captured by the great atmosphere of Guinea-Bissau. It's a friendly and easygoing country in which I have never felt unsafe. Wildlife aside, people have always been open to me throughout the country. Despite struggling to provide for their families, they have often been willing to share whatever they had with strangers. Traveling in Guinea-Bissau is not always easy, but for those who are adventurous and open-minded, it can be extremely rewarding. Political instability and poverty may have affected this small nation, but the joy of living of its inhabitants is contagious and makes the country a pleasant surprise. When compared with other African countries possessing similar travel and tourism potential, Guinea-Bissau does not have a very diverse travel and tourism offer. Nonetheless, the ecotourism concept, combined with beach, fishing, and nautical activities, has so far proven capable of attracting European tourists, especially inbound arrivals from Portugal. Guinea-Bissau's pristine and exotic landscapes also remain an important factor in its appeal as a travel and tourism destination. And don't forget that in order not to miss our next videos, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Reason 2. Guinea-Bissau has a great archipelago off the coast. The jewel in the country's crown is the labyrinth of more than 80 tropical islands that make up the Bijagos archipelago. Long white sand beaches are lapped by waters brimming with fish. Hippos, monkeys, chimps, and buffaloes thrive in protected reserves where hundreds of bird species call their vast mangroves and wetlands home. Best of all, they're not that touristy yet, so you won't find those large tourist resorts claiming beaches or busloads of elderly tourists wearing their socks and sandals taking pictures of every child they see while trying to bargain with local salesmen to get a few cents of their prices just for the fun of it. We spent a few days on the island of Bubak, the most populated island of the archipelago, still not densely populated though. After arriving with an ancient Russian or Eastern European barge full of people, goods, goats, and chicken, we met up with a friend who took us to the hotel that was right next to his house. The following morning, we drove about 10 kilometers to the other end of the island and arrive on the most amazing and deserted tropical beach. Bruce Beach. Here we swam, relaxed, walked the beach, built campfires from driftwood, and ate at a small nearby resort. And last don't forget this tip, when you stay on Bubak, arrange a bicycle to be able to explore the island. Once on the other side, you can either spend the night in a small beachside resort or pitch a tent on the beach. Reason 3. Tourism equals money equals development. The economic benefits of tourism can carry far. Imagine this, you spend your money earned at home on a place to sleep, pay the taxi driver to bring you to the market where you will buy a piece of bread and maybe some souvenirs. All the people you'll pay for goods or services will earn from it, that's just how economics works. With their earnings, these people can in turn provide for their families, which means income for the people that they buy from. This way your 50 cents paid for bread can carry far into the local economy. On the other hand, an increase in tourism may cause an increase in employment possibilities in a country. When the hotel owner sees his number of guests increase, he may decide to hire an assistant to help him with his chores. Without tourism, this assistant may not have had a job. However, because of the increase in the number of tourists, he now is able to generate an income that helps him provide for his family. 
These are just two examples of the many possible effects of tourism for a country, as there are too many to mention here. However, tourism also has possible negative effects, as you can read on the UNESCO website on sustainable tourism. Therefore, I ask you to make sure that your visit to any country is responsible, respectful, and sustainable. Reason 4. The people and the food. According to the latest census, Guinea-Bissau's population is about 2 million inhabitants and is characterized for being mostly young, about half of the population is under 18 and the average life expectancy stands at 53 years. The literacy rate is about 43% and school leaving is high due to economic, social, and cultural reasons. Guinea-Bissau's population is dominated by more than 20 African ethnicities, including the Balan, one of the largest ethnic groups in the country, the numerous Fulani and their many subgroups, the Diala, the Nalu, the Bajago, the Landuma, the Papel, and the Malinke. Traditional Guinean cuisine is impressive thanks to the palette of flavors, aromas, colors, and ingredients used. A simple but surprising cuisine, resulting from the combination of African ancestral culinary culture, with local products such as vegetables or fruits found only here, with a touch of traditional Portuguese cooking. Oysters are abundant in Guinea-Bissau and are a pretext to gather with a group of friends under the corral. Farim shrimps are another delicacy that must be savored. Lime, chili, palm oil or mancara broth are all present in Guinean cuisine, which is known for its intense and spicy flavors. To accompany the mafe, made of seafood or fish sauces and broths, we invariably find rice. Fish such as bika are greatly appreciated and are usually eaten grilled, topped with a sauce made with onion, lemon, and chili. And of course, rice. As most characteristic dishes, to mention, chibu broth, made with palm oil, okra, meat or fish, the mankara broth, peanut broth with meat or fish, siga, made with okra, meat or fish and shrimp, oyster shea, oyster rice, cafrela, local chicken or grilled lamb with lemon sauce, chili and onions, and stew or grilled goat. Some ethnic groups eat monkey, which represents a real threat for some species and the papel eat dog. Reason 5. Because it is an undeveloped and unspoiled country. Guinea-Bissau's per capita gross domestic product is one of the lowest in the world. It is expected to reach 630 US dollars by the end of 2021. Approximately 69% of the population lives below the poverty line, and 25% of the population suffers from chronic malnutrition. Its economy is mainly based on agriculture, with fish, cashew nuts, and peanuts being the main export products, over 90%. Most people in Guinea-Bissau work hard and have little, but they're often proud and don't bother you asking to give them things. They rather seem to want to help you, maybe sell you something, but they don't have the idea that the Westerner comes to give things. Parks and natural reserves help maintain an untouched charm. Guinea's greatest jewel is the 88 islands of the precious archipelago of Bajagos, classified by UNESCO as Biosphere Reserve. Every year in February or early March, Guinea-Bissau celebrates carnival with street dancing and processions. It is a good opportunity to see the ethnic diversity of the country displayed through different groups of costume dancers and musicians. The locals certainly know how to throw a party. Enjoy the relaxed atmosphere and faded glory of Bissau, the capital. There are plenty of cafes from which to sit with a coffee and watch the world go by. The Portuguese Quarter, with its winding streets and colorful Mediterranean-style houses, is a fine place to while away a lazy afternoon. It was in Cachu that Francis Drake and John Hawkins fought against the Portuguese in 1567. The small square fortress on the river dating from the 16th century was restored in 2004 and contained some well-preserved guns. The town is picturesque and is a good place to enjoy sunsets over the water. It is for all of this and much more and adopting a posture as a responsible, respectful, and sustainable Western traveler that we must visit this country, which has so much to offer us when compared to the small contribution of our visit. So, when are you going to Guinea-Bissau? Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel.